and Brad, the two most famous physical therapists on the internet. Hi folks, I'm Bob Schrupp, physical therapist. Brad Heineck, physical therapist. Okay, we're one of the most famous physical therapists on the internet. In our opinion, of course, Bob. Today, Brad, we're going to talk about foam rolling your back. Don't do this. Do this instead. Do you remember this would be like your mom talking to you? Yeah. Bradley, or bread, what did she call you? Bread. Don't do this. Yeah, don't call me bread. Okay, Just so. Just carry on. By the way, if you're new to our channel, please take a second to subscribe to us. We provide videos on stay healthy, fit, pain-free, and we upload every day. Also, yes, sir, yes, ma'am, you want to join us on our social media channels and our website, Bob and Brad, because we're always giving something away. Go to the giveaway section, yep. and we'll reveal what we're going to give away. No, we're going to tell you right now. What oh, are we giving away, Brad? Bob, you really got me in suspense. The sleep of Ace and Ape. You're still not saying it right. Uh, Bob, why, Bob? Sleep of Ace and Mattress. Why? Okay. Why? 700 tiny mattresses. This is only a sample of it. Great for pain relief. Mm -hmm. If you're having pain when you sleep, you know, get rid of your spouse and get a new mattress. Get rid of your spouse. Wow, Bob. Okay. All right. Let's go. Today, we're going to talk about, I want to show the foam rolling uh, that you want to try if you have back pain and the one you don't want to do. The first one that you don't want to do, let's start with that. You don't want to foam roll right over under over your low back. The reason for that is, Brad, can you hold this? Yep. So if I put, take a spine here, and here's the low back. You you just put there. it across like that. Yeah, like this. You're really jamming. You see, there's a lot of little joints there. And you're jamming them all together. Mm -hmm. And that's not going to be feel comfortable. It's just not going to be good for the back either. It's a little aggressive. Uh, because when you go up to your mid back, you also have the rib cage supporting the spine, which makes a big difference. It's all and also the rib cage. I mean, when we go up to the mid back, which we're going to say you can go ahead and do, mm -hmm. you, we don't want the low back. You can do the mid back, is because a lot of people start getting rounded out here. Yes. So we're trying to stretch that out and get back into the right position. So that's why don't we start off with that one first, Brad? Let's yeah. do the mid back one. All right. Um, you're going to go that angle. I'm going to go this angle. Sure. I'll start from this side here. Great one to do. It's probably one of the best foam rolling exercises you can do is the mid back. Just get it in place. And I did this this morning. I'll do it again right now. Oh, this is very does simple feel to do. Good. You see, I lift my butt up and I'm using my legs to, uh, you know, roll me back and forth. Very simple to do. Brad, you tend to go a little bit further up on the neck, I think, than I do. I, it feels good up there, Bob. Yeah. I just really like going. And if my mic set wasn't in the way, I'd go even a little bit further. But, you know, my God, I just looked up and Sam was looking at, at me with the hat and scared me. Yeah, that kind of skeleton. <laughs> Anyways, but no, she's taking a look at him. <laughs> All right, next one, Brad. Let's keep it rolling here. Now, if you want to do one for the mid or the low back, this is what I just did, Brad. I tweaked my back a couple of weeks ago. Sure. And this felt so good. I thought, you know, we got to show this. So I think I'm hitting the kind of the quadratus lumborum. And what you're doing is you're not going directly on the spine. You're going onto the side. Yep. So did you try this one or not? Well, yeah, actually, because I'm a little more sensitive in my mid back because my spondylolisthesis. But if I control my weight bearing through my arm here and my leg here. Yeah, see, so we're right. The pelvis, we're going off the pelvis. We're not. Let me show you here. Show, yeah, I showed the spine. So I'm, I'm like this. See, I'm not on the pelvis itself. I'm off the pelvis. I'm catching right into this area here. Yep. Probably catching the quadratus lumborum, wouldn't you say? Yeah, which happens to be a, a pretty big muscle that uh, controls that low back. And look what Brad's doing. He's a little bit little bit off, not not right onto the side. You're a little bit like three-quarter angle, aren't yep. you, wouldn't you say, Brad? Yeah. I'd give the pelvis about a 45, 50 degree angle, yep. 51 degrees. Kind of 45 degrees this yep. way. And I and you roll, I roll, I don't know about you, Brad, right right, off, right off the pelvis. You know, and that feels really good. What you're going to do at home is do what feels good. You'll right. know. You, yeah. You'll know because right now I can feel when I get that muscle. It just feels like one of those hurt so good pains. That's exactly what it should be. It should not be hurt, hurt. It should be hurt. So good. Yeah, it's like, so, oh, that feels good when you're done. All right, next one, Brad. Now we're going to go ahead. This one is a little not as direct, but your hip flexor muscles come up and attach into your pelvis. And if they're tight, which often they are in a lot of people who sit a lot, they pull the pelvis over like this and they affect the back. So it's going to do this type of thing here. Here's the pelvis. The hip flexor, a tight hip flexor is going to pull it over like that. It's going to kind of put pressure on the back there. 
So does, does that make sense to you, Brad? You look confused. That's all right, Bob. Let's show the stretch. Yeah. We'll talk about it later. Why? <laughs> There's something he's not this agreeing with This feels really here. good, by the way. I wanted to make sure I got the other side. because. All right, now let's go to this. Okay, the hip flexor, you do one at a time, the way I do it. Otherwise, you get the package, and you don't want to get the package. Right, Brad? <laughs> so I'm just glad I got one. Okay, yeah, here yeah, we yeah. go. <laughs> so I'm, I'm rolling a little bit off onto the side a little bit again here. And this is a great one for... Uh, hip pain. I mean, this one can really uh, re uh, contribute to hip pain if the hip flexor is tight. I'm not going to do this side, Brad, because I have a mic on this side here. So. Yeah, that'll, so. that'll, wear, that'll ruin your audible, audible audibility. <laughs> Excuse me. I, I actually like to go over and get my hip abductor with this as well. So, you know, you can vary that a little. So the hip, uh, just as the hip flexor can affect the pelvis in the back, so can the hamstrings. So oh, right. We want to do the hamstrings Absolutely. too. So we're going to go ahead. This is the last one we're going to do on the floor. You're going to go ahead and just, you can roll them both to start off with. It's usually what I do. And then I go down to one and you can even cross your leg over and that really hits that one. And the hamstring, remember, goes all the way up to the pelvis. So roll it all the way up yeah, there. Way up to the buttocks area. You know, one thing... Uh, I'm not going to reveal this right now, Brad. I got a, a, a different stretching, some advanced stretching to do for the hamstring. Oh, you do? And uh, it's going to hold out on us. I'm going to huh? hold out. It's going to be a future video. That's why you got to subscribe to us. Oh, yes. All right, last one, Brad. We're trying to keep things moving I'm here. I'm sorry, Bob. I, I just am enjoying this. This is one Brad probably wouldn't do because you have spondylosthesis or however you say it. Or <laughs> say it your way. Spondylosthesis. Spondylosis. Spondylosis. This is. We'll all have an English major. Yeah. Practice. So this is just a real simple one you can do. If you want to get into the low back without putting too much stress on it, you can actually get it right around the pelvis here and lean back like this. Yeah. It gives a little overpressure to the back. Yeah. It's gentle, yeah. but you're you're stretching into extension. It's kind of it's a nice one to do. Yeah. If you've got spondylosis or stenosis. And you do this and it just hurts. Right. And you may not know you have it, but if you do this and it hurts, just don't do it. Skip that one. Yeah, if you're older than 55, in all seriousness, right. and, and if you do this one and it hurts, there's a chance you might have spondylosis right. stenosis or spondylosis. Right. You know, as you shrink, you know, that can contribute to that stenosis. Uh, so people, when they get over 55, typically yeah, the are starting to the, shrink. The discs lose their uh, height and, and yeah. water and the, all that. The aging so, process is a beautiful thing. Yeah. It's well, a, if you, you know, as Brad and I always say, if there's wrinkles and gray hair on the outside, there's wrinkles and gray hair on the inside, <laughs> in, a, in a sense. Things are wearing yeah, down. Yeah. So it's just part of life. It so, is. So eventually we'll be dust. You try to depress our no, viewers. no, no. But <laughs> circle of life, you know. Then somebody yeah, will yeah. eat us, and then they'll go on to the yeah, exactly. Bob. All right, mm -hmm. thanks.